My name's Melissa Delaney and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Network for Art and Technology. We come from the philosophy that everybody is a storyteller and that's just a natural part of being human. For over 30 years, Anat's worked with Australian artists predominantly. So the strength of the projects we do are collaborations and partnerships with artists, scientists and people working with technology. So our role within that is as a connector and a network where we develop projects, residency projects, major symposiums, um, international publication projects, for example, and then we put our artists with those science and technology partners and we see what happens out of those collaborations and partnerships. People are more interested in what happens with those intersections of science, art and technology, particularly as we see those developments um, as a consequence of the global pandemic, where people are more keenly interested um, as amateurs and lay people in science. And we're also seeing um, across the world more developments in technology, particularly around AI and a whole range of other technologies to do with supply chains and blockchain. So that crosses over into the art. We do have one artist who's working on a project currently where he's developed three avatars and those avatars are now quite world famous. Ruby um, has a, a fashion a shoot with Vogue magazine and has just got major corporate sponsorship. So Ruby is an avatar, she's an entertainer, she's a singer, and their entertainment company sends Ruby out um, to perform and Ruby's now world famous. So this is a trend for the future where we as humans are creating this technology that will be interfacing in public environments where the humans can probably stay at home and relax a little bit more. We have scientists who are working currently with our artists working in DNA. So they, one artist had a hip replacement and was making porcelain um, sculptures from her bone material that she had uh, propagated in a laboratory with a DNA scientist. And through that, it also not only artistically interrogated the material they were working with, but they were coming out with also scientific finds from, from working with that DNA material in a lab. So there are all these really interesting things that are happening at those intersections and at the forefront of that technology and engaging with humans. We've got another artist who's been doing sound recordings um, in a sewage plant in Melbourne and recording the phosphorescence in the sewage plant, which is actually a, a bio life form that is non-human. She's been playing ACDC to the phosphorescent um, life forms and they are responding to the rock and roll music really beautifully and she's recording those responses. So that's her PhD material and that is just a really interesting and fun project as well. Our uniqueness in that space um, is that we can act as um, advocates for other people who are starting to emerge into that space. So we have that expertise and that knowledge and we're able to um, advise and connect people who are interested in working within art, science and technology. One of the key programs is called Synapse and we have two Synapse residencies a year and we invite applications from artists who are also working with an identified science or technology partner. Often they're universities and the residencies last for three to four months full time. And ANAT supports um, the artists to go into those host organisations and work closely with their science and technology partners. It's all about process rather than outcomes. Some of the successes we've seen from those, one of the last residences we did with Nikki Spiro at Flinders University in South Australia, she works with seaweed and algae, and in her partnership, they were making alternative plastics. So bringing the artist's mind together with the scientist's mind in a pure sense of collaboration, they started coming up with these solutions to um, plastics. 
Flinders University have asked Nikki to stay on as a permanent artist in residence to continue working on that project with scientists. So that's a real success story for us. One of um, Australia's renowned artists working in technology particularly is Stellark. And Stellark has a, enjoys a, an international reputation for his work. He was around in the early days of ANAT. The work he does now is cutting edge um, internationally and he works in the fields of post-humanism. So Stellark is now in his 70s and the work that he's doing, he sees the human body as being obsolete. And so he is doing um, add-ons with technology to augment the human body and he's using himself as, as the subject for that work. He has an ear transplanted on his forearm and when I spoke to him yesterday he's working with the Science Gallery in Melbourne in a residency program later on this year where he's building um, a large scale machine that he will be attached to and we as the audience remotely and as well as being on site can give the machine directions and operations and Stellark as the artist will then be responding to our instructions as the audience. Some of the challenges um, we've found working in this um, area of science, art and technology are the question is always why and that's what we start off with. Why are we doing this? So there's a whole range of ethical and philosophical questions around the kinds of work we do with, with our artists as well that come out of this. We've find, found in a lot of collaborations the artists working with the scientists, the scientists will start to question their practice and their research and start to change the way they think and they work as well. There is a real similarity between the way that an artist thinks and the way that a scientist thinks. So initially, you may think that they're really different areas of, of practice and really different fields in the way that they, they work in terms of their process. We find that the different areas are both really passionate and focused and dedicated to their area of work and research and often to the extent that they don't get to talk to other people about it. They may be in the studio or the laboratory and very isolated except for their writing or their public outcomes from engagement and talking about their work. So often when we get those, those incredible thinkers and minds together, they gel completely because they have somebody who gets them and who understands the work they're doing and there's a real passion there and that's an exciting part of our work as an organisation to see those kind of engagements and passion happening. We find generally with the artists who work on our projects and the partners, there's a real um, curiosity and an inquiring mind and generally um, a real interest in humanity in nature. A lot of um, people also are working with nature, so it might be people working with bio art or things that we can't see as humans and really exploring that. And what is our place now in history and where we can take humanity. So there's a lot of really great work happening in those kind of curious spaces. I'm a researcher, sound artist, and scholar associated with the School of Art at RMIT University. I'm also the artistic director of the Bogong Centre for Sound Culture, which is an artist-led initiative interrogating the effects of climate change on the Australian Alps. And it is the first organisation ever to support me as an emerging artist. They funded uh, residency that I had in France at the CICV Pierre Schaeffer Research Institute in Eremoncourt in the eastern part of France bordering Switzerland without Annette's support. I probably wouldn't have been able to participate in that program which was um, seminal in the development of my practice. I think it's a really critical role that the organisation plays in bringing artists together with um, organisations and uh, other uh, researchers and um, 
and activities occurring in other disciplines um, to see how, how we can all work together to, I guess, interrogate and express new, um, new knowledge and to problem solve some of the issues that are kind of um, underpinning contemporary life as we know it. I think and it's a, a really unique organisation in Australia for those reasons through programs such as the Synapse Residency Program that brings artists and uh, scientists together to work collaboratively on um, art science exchanges and research projects. I am a Korean-Australian interdisciplinary artist with a conceptual focus on my lived experience with persistent pain. And that has an intimate understanding in how and why my process needs to maintain an authenticity by staying true to scientific knowledge. And that was willing to nurture and take risks alongside me so that I could grow and advance my artistic identity from a solid studio practitioner who had been working with traditional mediums into an experimental artist. They were supportive of my developing focus on pain science, new technologies and disability advocacy. And that provided me with a safe emotional space to experiment, explore, fail, learn and discover in this new creative platform that I wasn't initially familiar with. My name is Helen Pinor and I'm an artist who explores ambiguous transitional zones. And one of these zones that I've done in-depth explorations of is the life-death boundary, looking at how life and death are not too neat, but actually bleed into each other in all sorts of ways over time and space. I've also explored the interpersonal nature of organ transplantation and what it means to share an intimate organ like a heart with a complete stranger who's donated that heart, who's no longer alive. In a more recent project, I've explored the boundary between living and non-living uh, through my own hip replacement surgery. So I've looked at what happens at the interface between bone and implant and those intimate cellular and material events that happen across this interface. And I think the, um, the crucial elements of that developmental work from an artist's perspective and in terms of how it's benefited my practice has been around the nourishment it's provided through these um, in-depth, long-term research residencies that have allowed for speculative research. Annette has always understood that great works of art do come out of the deep nourishment of artist practices. What sustains Annette, um, particularly over a period of 30 years, are the artists. So we see ourselves as a network and that is crucially important and we're ever expanding and always growing. And so we also tell stories through our collaborations and we do that through our website and our blogs and every project that happens that artists and the scientists and the technologists do a um, online publication documenting that process. So that's part of the, the storytelling of our organisation that is a public um, publication for our audiences. And we find that people want to hear more about that process. Processes are very important to us and to support and pay artists to be able to go into their studios and labs with science partners and work through that process together and collaborat collaboratively is a really vital thing that we do in our work. Annette's guiding philosophy is that it always has to be about the art. So even though we're engaging with all of these other partners, it's how does the art sit in that? So it's, we're not a science organisation, we're not a technology organisation. We have many people working in those fields um, and doing really great work and really interesting work in science communication, for example. And there are other great orgs um, who do that around the world. But what we're interested in is throwing the artists into that mix and being being a little bit of the provocateur in that kind of environment and interrogating why things are happening. And the artists often do that quite organically and without intention. So it's very interesting for us to be able to be centred in that art space 
and then keep that uniqueness of what happens in those kind of collaborations and programs by bringing artists into the spaces. We find that there really aren't any cultural differences because the language of art, the language of science, the language of technology, they're all universal languages. So there's something that um, is a really beautiful way to, to build community and kind of cross any cultural divides.